guys, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces, and it's time for our monthly mining rig build for the month of May 2021. And the GPU we selected for this month is the GTX 1070, an oldie but goodie. This GPU came out in 2016, and unfortunately, because of the current market conditions and hardware just being absolutely crazy, trying to find these GPUs, even old GPUs, is absolutely nuts and way overpriced. Unfortunately, when this card came out brand new, I bought it for $420 up here in the top right. And on Amazon now, you can buy it used for $550. And on eBay, you can probably find it for anywhere from $400 all the way up to thousands of dollars. It really depends. You can get the job done, especially locally through Facebook Marketplace or other outlets. You might be able to score yourself a decent GPU, a 1070. The 1070 has a rated TDP of 150 watts, so we need to prepare for that in our build but you can get this down to about 110 watts hashing safely or anywhere between 26 to 30 mega hash depending on the silicon lottery i do have a system build for you um, and priced out everything already i do have a typo down here for some reason it says the 3070 that's not what we have i have the price set for six 1070s for 3500 that's going to be put, putting the individual cost at about 580 dollars but let's go through the rest of the parts list, which I have linked down in the description below, as well as additional links that we're going to go through or utilize in this video. Basically, I went with the i3-10100 because I started seeing the prices for the Intel dual-core CPUs go up so much in price, like 150 160 that I figured we might as well get uh, something that's actually fairly new to the CPU market. It's a four-core CPU and get the job done. We're not going to be focusing on CPU mining, but we can still utilize those extra threads. Um, and to cool it, we got the cool Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, a tried and true good cooler, just stout all around. The motherboard we're going to be utilizing is the Asus Prime H510M-E, which is a micro ATX board. The reason I picked this board is because, again, it's compatible with the 10100 CPU from Intel. But it also has a by 16 slot and then two by one slots. And those two by one slots are going to come in handy. It has everything else we need. Something I didn't put in this list as far as parts is a CPU fan splitter or CPU fan. A uh, four, <laughs> four pin splitter, not a CPU fan splitter. We have one CPU header and then we want, have one chassis header. You're going to need to split that to support the, the fans that we're going to utilize on the rig. So just bear that in mind because that is not priced in. Additionally, the memory, since we got two uh, DDR4 slots, we went with the Patriot Viper 4 Blackout, 8 gigabit gigabytes total, 2x4. Uh, the Patriot P300 for storage, a 256 gigabyte, uh, and that's the M.2 because this motherboard does have an M.2 slot right there above the by 16 lane or slot. And it will get the job done. You can save some money, honestly, on possibly going with the cheaper memory so maybe getting like some real regular crucial green pcb uh 2400 megahertz memory so that'd be like 20 bucks a, a, a pop so 40 bucks total you could probably get the su6 uh i think it's the 635 from a data for around 25 bucks so i will save you some money on the storage as well and then the power supply that we chose is the corsair hx i 1200 now, from Corsair directly, the website, you can get it for 309 Alternatively, you can save some money if you wanted to by getting either two 850-watt power supplies or checking out Parallel Miner down also in the description where they have a server power supply and a Z Z SX breakout board, which allows you to power your motherboard and your GPUs. However, bear in mind, if you're on 110, 120-volt circuit, uh, you'll only be able to get 800, around 800 watts out of that 1200 watt power supply and you would uh, need to get uh, a 220 or be on a 220 or 240 to get the full 1200 out of that power supply. So just bear that in mind. But this 1200 watt power supply can get the job done uh, with all things considered. It does have six strands of dual six plus two. So that's two eight pins per strand. But I want you to bear in mind, considering the, the powering of your GPUs, because some of these 1070s come with dual 8-pin instead of single 8-pins. Um, and you want to make sure you're not running too much power through a single strand, especially if you're going to get splitters and split it, okay? 
So just bear that in mind. Uh, each strand on, on a six pin would be two, around 226 watts and then on an eight pin, 250 watts. So just bear that in mind. Um, you may not even need the splitters if you're just gonna stick with the six GPU or 1070s. But if you wanted to, they're only 16 bucks and deep in the mines is something I've been using for quite a long time. Uh, and the quality is good, so I, I can't complain. Uh, I'm not endorsing them or anything. I'm just saying I've been using them and I haven't had any issues. So you, I'll have that linked in the description as well. So we got everything, the main components listed here. The other components that we're going to need besides uh, additional splitters if needed is the U-Bit 6-pack adapter or riser pack, not adapter, uh, to connect all of our GPUs. You can check out GPRisers.com if you like to, to get those risers instead. It is also 6-pack. is a little bit more in price. Uh, otherwise, a 6-pack of risers would do the job fine from Amazon. Uh, the fans that I picked are the Arctic F12 PWM 5-pack. Not the speeds I would like, really, um, but it will get the job done. I, I, I particularly would like fan speeds that can hit up to 2,500 RPM. Just because when you get those GPUs closer in together, uh, it's very hard to push air through to get accurate cooling to them. Uh, additionally, we need to pick up an adapter, right? Because we're, we're going to be converting a buy one slot, a PCIe buy one, to four USB. And we're going to use the bottom two slots here on the screen. And as my boy Brandon Coin says, some of these will come as DOA or may not work accurately. Uh, so you may want to pick up double of what you need. So in this case, we need two. Uh, I priced in four total, around $33 each. Uh, S Union is the one that I have and has been going strong and continues to work. But just in case, it may be beneficial to pick up an extra one. And then, of course, the mining rig frame. Now, you can save additional money by going out and building a frame yourself through, you know, going to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, getting the parts to angle iron, and then custom making your own, uh, drilling out the holes, doing whatever you need to. But if not, this is a six GPU case for fairly cheap. Some of the old school Vada frames that many of my miner friends use um, are way overpriced and do not spend 200 plus on a frame that should be only 40 bucks but they also have an 8 GPU frame for 5619. I'll have this link down below. Just don't overpay for products. Everything is going up in price, especially considering we're trying to do this as efficient as possible while being as profitable as possible. Right now in the current market, it is hurting the profits, okay? The mining profitability has gone down. However, that doesn't mean it is gone. Uh, I know a lot of miners will wind up selling their GPUs once a certain project has switched to ETH 2.0, but there are other cryptocurrencies that you can mine and still be profitable even when that switch does come. The total that we have here right now, if we try to uh, set up six 1070s with an estimated calculator, which is what whattomine.com is, it's just an estimation because I know I can get close to 30 mega hash rather than it says 26 here. Um, I know I can draw less than 120 watts or 125 watts. I can get to like 110, 109. Really depends on the GPU and the silicon lottery, but as efficiently as possible, we're just gonna go with what, what to mine has. And at time of filming, it gives us 156 mega hash, drawing 140 watts of power at 10 cent per kilowatt hour, 1% fees and the total hardware cost being 4372 which I round up to 4373 we will be making about $14 a day and our break even will be 311 days that is high but keep in mind that right now we're in a down downturn who's to say that later on in the future by the time you're watching this the profits may be 20 to 25 dollars a day or 30 to 35 dollars a day the GTX 1070 is an eight gigabyte card, so we'll be able to sustain the algorithms as the DAG gets bigger and bigger, so it does take into account longevity, whereas this, uh, this 1066 gig is gonna bump into issues with projects that have a large DAG. So the 1070 can stand the test of time and get the job done. Just do not spend thousands of dollars on a 1070, please. Try to find it to as close to 400, if not lower than 400 as possible. If you can't, I would personally say 
525 is the cutoff. I, I really wouldn't find myself buying it at 525, but that's the cutoff if all GPU resources have been exhausted, especially in some countries where they can't even find these GPUs and what they can find is going for well over a thousand dollars. So just take care of yourselves, be mindful of everything. I'll have everything linked in the description below. As well, there will be a link down to dogelord.com where you can pick up a shirt like this from the Serpent X collection. There's also Red Panda Mining, Not Your Normal Miner, Savage Mine, Crypto Mikel, DC Adventure, dogelord.com has a whole host of apparel, cryptocurrency apparel. You should really check it out. And any help that you do uh, provide by clicking the link down below helps out the channel and I greatly appreciate it. But that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Do me a favor, hit the like button on the way out. Subscribe for more content like this and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.